Are we alone in the universe? I very much doubt. Why? I'm not an expert in this subject, but I have talked to the experts in the subject. And I know enough about the universe, the non-life forms in the universe, like how many galaxies we have and how many star systems we have, and uh, what is the sort of how many exoplanets we have. And I would consider it incredibly improbable that there never was any life form anywhere else in the universe, and we are so special. Now, what happens if there are other life forms that are so sentient and so intelligent that they consider us not intelligent and non-sentient? That is perfectly possible. Does, does that mean we would still be alone? No, I think we, we would, uh, we would probably, I would say, in the limited context in which I answered the question, I would consider that that is not what I was answering. It could very well happen, and I would even conjecture that the results would be disastrous. Because if their thought processes are similar to ours, we know exactly what happened when a technologically advanced civilization came in contact with a technologically not so advanced civilization. Red Indians, Australian Aborigines, and all these people. The technologically advanced civilization hardly ever show any mercy on the other people. And this is exactly what will happen between Earthlings, Homo sapiens, and this uh, highly evolved, technologically advanced, but not emotionally advanced creatures. What about multiverses? Do you think there are multiverses? And if there are, I guess there'd be more chance of aliens in the multiverse. Well, if you're talking strictly technically about the multiverse in the concept of string theory, the probability of contact with any of these multiverses are causally separated. In most sensible models of the string theory, therefore they are completely irrelevant. The chances of transition are quantum suppressed by the tunneling probabilities. Okay, so multiverses are, are not relevant to this question, are we Absolutely. alone? Absolutely. So even if they are over there, it's not important? Because, it's not important. So I guess only the aliens that are closest to us are most exactly. important. Exactly. Proxima Centauri is the place to look. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, based on the, uh, what, the ideas that you expressed earlier, you said, hey, a technological civilization, the record of them is just they usually kill and, and right. commit genocide. Um, and Stephen Hawking, based on this idea, the same idea, said, uh, you know, we should not send out messages to outer space. We should only listen. Some people think that's prudent. So other people think it's paranoia. What is your view? I, I really don't have a strong enough probabilistic calculation on how much we will reduce the risk of being massacred by an alien, insentient civilization by not sending out. Let me just give the same example again. When people in certain continent think that they want to explore other continents and they come across technologically not so advanced civilization, they just colonize that place. It could very well happen that some technologically advanced civilization, the outlaws in that place were put in a spaceship and sent off. But they are sufficiently clever and sufficiently advanced that they anyway discover Earth, okay? And all the consequences. So even if we do not send out signals, there is a probability for this to happen. And if we send out these signals, we obviously enhance the probability. But I'm not expert enough to comment. I very much doubt whether Stephen did the calculation either to comment by not doing this, what are the pros and cons. So I'm agnostic about it. Okay, so you're not in a position to make that decision, I guess. Neither is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> okay. Let's say Paddy and his crew are in a spaceship, and they're in a suspended animation, and they have a spaceship that might take them to another, a different part of the universe, maybe a different part, maybe a different sure. universe. And so you wake up, and how would, what kind of experiments would you do to verify that you're in a new universe or the old one? Oh, I, I have been, I, I presume the, the kind of uh, deep free state is something that when I come back, I come up with my uh, current knowledge of Lando lift shift 10 volumes. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Then I think it is fairly straightforward to check out various things like take a heavy ball and a small ball and drop and see whether they fall at the same time, whether principle equivalence holds and, if they and things don't, of that then kind. You're in a different if, <laughs> if you're not, it is fantastically exciting. You get a chance to play Einstein. Okay. All right. The reason I mention that is because in the uh, have you seen the movie uh, Planet of the Apes? No. No. Okay. All right. How about uh, is this reality that we have around us? Is that, could this be a simulation? Yes, I heard about that, and uh, you know the Matrix sort of stuff. 
but again, I find people are very confused and confusing as regards, uh, as regards the semantics. For example, there is a point of view in Upanishadic philosophy and in Zen that there is an underlying reality which is like an ocean and all that you see is like waves in the ocean. Okay? And you know, it, it is all part of the same thing and you know, it comes and goes and each wave thinks it is an individual but you know, it is actually a part of the ocean and some enlightened beings know that there is an ocean underneath, others don't, blah, 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 blah. In that case, would you consider the waves to be a simulation of the ocean? Or a part of it. Is it the same as being a simulation? I don't know, you define it. Well, I would consider that is a somewhat more coherent picture. The simulation has certain manipulative angle to it. Yes. I don't think the ocean manipulates the waves. Okay. The laws of the ocean does govern the propagation of the waves. The laws of the ocean does describe how the waves will behave. But I, I would hesitate to call it manipulation.